So we're here today, we got Andy's Isuzu. We're gonna be putting on a new set of tires. And this is gonna be the beginning of our kind of journey of getting the tires, the suspension, and the brakes all sorted out. So I'm hoping this week we can get the tires on, get the brakes done. We've got a new set of Terrain Tamer discs and pads on the front, as well as a new set of Terrain Tamer drums for the back. So that's gonna be really nice. The brakes are binding, so we just wanna get those replaced and get that all sorted out. But let's get the new tires on and see how they fit. I'll tell you a little bit about what we're putting on. The current tires that are on the Suzu are a Roadstone Rodian All-Terrain. They're not the greatest tire. They're a 245, 70, 16. And the tread is pretty worn. The side walls are pretty cracked and tired. And we're gonna be putting on the Goodyear Wrangler Adventure AT and the tire size we're going to is a 235 85 16. So we're going to go up a bit in profile um, and we're going to gain quite a bit of height on the diff uh, front and back on the vehicle. So that's going to be good. So that'll help us when we're off road. It'll also make it a little bit more comfortable to have a bit more sidewall and it's a very good tire. I used it on my Amarok and when we just did our trip now with Emma in Namakwa land. She, use, she uses that on her um, Pathfinder, and I know that they're very good. So, can handle what my tires can handle, then it'll be perfect for Andy. But, car's going in now, and we can get started. Does it feel higher? Does it I feel, feel higher? higher? Yes, definitely. It's just that little gap more that you've got to lift up your mm. body. So that it definitely feels higher to me. Yeah. Is it better? Yeah, it's a lot better. It's quiet. I find it smoother as well. Yeah. The steering wheel is straight. Yeah. Which makes a huge difference in my life. So don't just be sitting like this <laughs> thinking I'm wonky. Great. Well, then uh, we can get going to our next thing. We'll just finish up here and then next bit is sorting out your brakes. Let's do that. <laughs> cool. So that's the tyres done. They look really good. They've added a bit of height to the vehicle. There's a slight clearance issue on the front there. It's just touching a little bit of the, f of the mud flap. Um, but I don't think that's going to be too big a problem. The vehicle hasn't actually had its suspension done yet, so it hasn't had its lift. I think they have messed around a little bit with this vehicle to lift it a bit because it's on torsion bars and they have done a shackle extension on the back. Um, a terrible one. But So it is theoretically lifted, but it's not properly lifted with the right suspension and the right everything done on it. So once we get that sorted out, I think that'll fix our clearance issue up front there. But um, for now, everything's looking hundreds. Um, that should be good. It should be a really nice tie for Andy. The reason why we've gone with the 135, we want to keep the turning circle, we want to try and mitigate as much rolling resistance as possible, but we still want to have the length of the tread when we're driving in thick sand or if we're out and we're you know, doing a bit of 4 x 4 ing and it's still a very competent off-road tire. Um, but try and kick back on some of the downsides of having a tire that looks good. 
you know, this still looks good and it still looks in proportion to the vehicle because it's a bit of an older car. Um, they're not so like big and bulky yet where it, it looks it looks like it needs a 265. Um, and because there's no aftermarket bumper on the front, you're not really seeing a whole lot of the tire. So it's one of those things where it's, I think it's going to be a really good balance of, um, you know, comfort and, you know, uh, efficiency at the same time as being very good performance off-road. So we'll, we'll see. I'll drive it around a little bit and see how it uh, see how it fares as well, and you know Andy will give me feedback and stuff as we go. But so far, so good. So we're back at Paul's workshop. The Suzu is inside. We've got all the brakes and stuff off. The old brakes, the front brakes were absolutely buggered. The rear drums, it's time for a replacement. So we've got a Terrain Tamer kit for the front and the back, which is really, really nice. I just want to say thanks to Terrain Tamer for that. That's a big, big help. Um, we've got new pads going in. And yeah, let's get inside and check it all out. Do you feel this, this ridge here? Yeah, she comes. I mean, that is absolutely metal. I presume. Metal. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. That's oh, what does that I sound? Saw the angle. Yeah. yeah. So if you look at the angle of the. So this of the thing pad, was standing skew like that, basically, instead of straight up like that, basically. So it was just grinding its way in there. Look at the. Oh. Look at there. And that's what's that's dug crazy. in here. See. Wow. The other one wasn't as bad. This one was really, really bad. This is the front left. Yeah. So we've got new shoes here for the rear drum brakes. New brake pads, for the front brakes. Oh, these are the drums. Rotors, brake lines with an extension for a vehicle lift. That's got an extra like 40 mils, 40, 50 mils on. Bedding in. Avoid high speed or aggressive braking during the first 100 kilometers to allow the rotors and pads to bed in to avoid heat spots and the subsequent reduction in braking efficiency. Okay, it's the first 100 k's. Right. Yeah, so reset your trip computer yes. from when you leave here okay. and just take it easy as you drive. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. We've had some good stuff happen with the Isuzu and we have had some bad stuff happen with the Isuzu. I think it's been that type of relationship from the beginning. Every time we have a moment of excitement, we then have a moment of regret. Um, but 
we're on good path now. Uh, we hope. <laughs> I think it's going to take a while for the confidence in the vehicle to develop because it has led us down, mainly Andy, let Andy down quite a lot. Now, I don't think it's necessarily the vehicle itself. Yes, it is. Obviously, it's, you know, we bought a lemon. It's going to you know make us lots of lemonade um, but at the same time we were disappointed by quite a bit of workmanship on the vehicle um, I think that's you know from the beginning of the guys who sold us the car the work that they did to then the next mechanics it went to and the next mechanics it went to and the next mechanics it went to it's been an endless you know up and down and if you're not watching what everyone's doing mistakes slip through the cracks and those mistakes with this vehicle happened to put Andy on the side of the road with no help. He's had to use his insurance already to flatbed the car and, you know, it's not ideal. It's not a great confidence inspiring thing if you think you've got to get out, go into the bush and, you know, use this vehicle in remote places. You want to know that your vehicle is reliable and safe and all of that stuff. So, where we left off last is we had done the um, tires and we had done the brakes and the feedback on that is actually brilliant. I took the car for a drive today all the way from Pretoria to Broadacres from Broadacres back home and um, actually really nice really really nice the new tires are nice and quiet they drive really nicely the going to the biggest size means the car is just so smooth on the highway it's just really really nice the revs are nice and low as you're driving you just sit put the car in fifth and you know it sits at 2000 rpm and it's just got plenty of torque plenty of power and you just cruise you don't even have to change gears um, so that's been really nice to to kind of take it out and give it a go and all that stuff um, the brakes feeling good and no complaints there we had a bit of an issue getting the you know the brake one of the brake lines we put in was for a different uh, spec vehicle so we had to you know do a little bit of stuff there so that needs to still go in the last brake line needs to just go in but otherwise everything there on that front has been good um, and yeah we're super stoked with everything now we've just got to see what's kind of going on with everything else we've had uh, yeah some interesting things happen Basically, the entire engine needed to get rebuilt. Um, they needed a whole new turbo again. And, um, yeah. Needed new gaskets again. And needed new... And basically, just some of the workmanship that we had was just... Wasn't great. Charred up our budget. It put us way behind on our build now because we've had to basically rebuild the engine twice. And then the next cars we went to were dramatically more expensive. And I felt like we should have just gone to them first, but we didn't know about them yet, so it is what it is. Um, I think what's important with the Isuzu's is that you go to somebody who's an Isuzu specialist and not somebody who is just a mechanic because the Isuzu has its quirks and you need a mechanic who knows how to work around those quirks um, in the right way. So we found some, some, some uh, a workshop in uh, Kaya Sands and they've seemed to have done a pretty good job here. We ended up replacing the diesel pump that's in the tank. We they did a new turbo, they did basically a full rebuild on the engine again and everything. So yeah. It's been a lot. It's been a lot. Poor Andy's been through the ringer. So I thought I would steal the bucky away from him for a while. Because when we got back from our trip, it broke down again. He was about to drive home from Rulfi's house and I uh, put his foot on the clutch and it just went straight to the floor. They went to check and the whole master cylinder had done itself in. So needless to say, we needed to buy a new master cylinder. So I was like, screw it, I'll buy it, don't worry. Um, so we got the master cylinder in, Cornell from um, from Rosema Bricks, you know, the, the mechanic, he came through, he helped out and fixed that. So. At least that's all sorted. The car was running really nicely today. All the work that's happened to it, it's actually in a really good position. Andy's got the aircon working again. The um, There's no check engine lights anymore. The Bluetooth is working. The speakers are working. Like 
car is actually really, really nice. I thoroughly enjoyed driving it today. And um, I'm looking forward to driving it around for the rest of the week. So I then I went through to Bush Tech. I popped in there. I grabbed a um, ammo box holder for the back of the canopy. And I've found a 40 liter water tank in the back of the in the back of the garage there so we've put that in and yeah we, we, we're gonna kind of get things going I've now taken one of my easy on roof racks and I'm gonna be cleaning that up and putting that on the canopy so basically our next project on the Isuzu is to do the dual battery system so we've got a red arc BC DC 25 that's going to go in uh, we've got a solar panel we've got a small inverter we've got a lithium battery so Andy's actually been running that setup at home to look after you know like during load shedding and stuff I helped him wire it up so he could use it at home so he's just had the solar panel set up there and been charging his lithium battery and running his inverter just so he can run a few small things at home during load shedding um, so that's been an unforeseen kind of uh, blessing there for him but now it's finally going to be able to go in the car and then we can see if we can get a fridge hooked up and see if we can actually get out on a trip before the end of the year so hopefully this is the turning point for the Isuzu hopefully from this point on we are flying forwards and not taking too many steps backwards we still have to do the suspension on the car it's going to be a costly endeavor so we're just doing our research of what we want to do when we're going to do it and find out how we can get some funding for it so at the moment that's where we're sitting and yeah so far it's been a right it's been an adventure but we've almost had this car a year and we still haven't done a trip with it so it's time to kick this project into gear and get this vehicle across the finish line so we can actually get out there and do a bit of overlanding. Anyways, that's it for now. We'll catch you on the next one when we're doing the whole dual battery system, putting on the solar panels, and we'll walk you through all of that stuff in the next episode. Anyways, cheers.